there's something inherently hopeful about restoration. The idea of leaving the natural world in a better state. Inside this black box we have gas analyzers and they're measuring CO2 and methane and water vapor and nitrous oxide. And then the next step is to very gently place the chamber on top of the snow at our measurement spot. Peatlands in terms of terrestrial ecosystems are kind of unparalleled in terms of the like actual carbon storage capability. Um, a forest is going to store carbon up until it becomes a certain height and a certain maturity. But what's different maybe about a peatland is that there isn't really, a, there's no upper limit on how much biomass can be stored in that landscape. The peat just will keep growing. Saving the world one chamber measurement at a time. <laughs> Right now we are in the middle of the winter and the restoration work is starting and the idea is to restore the peatland to close hydrological state. So hope uh, with higher water tables we will have less greenhouse gases to atmosphere and more carbon sequestered within the peatlands. So as part uh, of uh, monitoring of the catchment area we need to know how much water is in the snow. So I'm going to place this uh, snow cylinder in undisturbed snowpack and measure the snow depth with, with this and also measure the weight of the snow so we can derive amount of water within the snowpack. There uh, should be some groundwater. I'm going to take stable water isotope sample. So it's part of the monitoring uh, we do in Palas. Oh, freezing. There exist photographs from the 1950s, um, aerial photographs, that show what the site looked like before any of the drainage happened. So from that, it can be seen what the natural tree cover of the mire would be. And then what's happening now is that the cutting regime is to mimic that natural regime. For these heavy machinery, they need this hard crust of snow because in the summer, the whole site is, well, it's, bo it's boggy, yeah. let's be honest. <laughs> We 
your first exposure to the idea of something being, you know, protecting the environment is like, don't cut down the trees sort of thing. Feels counterintuitive maybe instinctively to people, but not all ecosystems are naturally forested. So most of the trees on the site are not in any way commercially viable. Typically, um, restoration is done by filling the ditches with peat, but this side is different, so the timber collected uh, during the logging is going to be used for building wooden dams. Looking forward to seeing how it looks when they finish the, the felling. It was really great to see uh, the logging process and really see the how it looks in practice. But I am freezing! Is running along here and then the, this, this channel will send the water away from the, the ditch channel behind so that it doesn't just flow back onto the ditch and carry on down its way after it overfills. So if the restoration is done well we're supposed to have already high water higher water levels next summer but let's see let's hope. Yes. Yeah. We certainly expect that there'll be more carbon kept in the ground, that is to say that the peat will be decomposing at a slower rate and hopefully a slower rate than it is growing. That is to say that the, the plants are inputting more material into the peat than is going in respiration. Carbon balance at the end of the year, it shifts quite easily depending on the height of the water level. This site is almost certainly a source at the moment. You know, if you just decrease the respiration rate by a little bit, you might find that actually this, this peatland is now fixing carbon rather than releasing it into the atmosphere. I'm really excited about this project. As a researcher, I hope that we learn more about the restoration process in peatlands and also how the restoration process should be conducted. So with these water samples, we can know approximately how much dissolved organic carbon is in water and how this change after restoration process. This is easier to take than groundwater in the winter. There has been many uh, peatland restoration projects already conducted, but actually we don't know exactly how holistically it impacts the biodiversity. Uh, hydrology and carbon. We have these three uh, main components now studied together and this was not much done before. It's important to think of peatland restoration as a long-term solution. And Once we've kind of stabilized things and taken the fossil fuels out of the equation, then this is the sort of slow burning kind of long-term way to get back to normal. Most of these peatland sites have been forming since the last ice age, so up to 8,000 years basically in this far north in Lapland. In some areas of Mathodoransoa, the peat is over four meters deep. Like, that's a long term storage that's, you know, that wouldn't go anywhere unless we drain it. In the northern, in the kind of boreal zone, I mean, there's about, I think there's about as much carbon in peat as there is in the atmosphere. So if all that peat, peat carbon was in the atmosphere, we'd be hooped. <laughs>